This is a community-supported legal education channel. Find out how you can support our mission at the links in the description below. So I wanted to talk about the Carrollton High senior students who were expelled from their public high school for their video, which I am not going to show and am only going to briefly describe. Let's take a quick look at the article that was written here. They're expelled for a video. They will not be graduates, the district says. This is on AtlantaAJC.com. I'll provide a link in the uh, in the description. But the basic facts of the story are they were two Carrollton High School seniors. They filmed a video in somebody's bathroom. I'm guessing it was their bathroom. And uh, the video was a TikTok video. It was posted to TikTok on Thursday, just last week. It went viral. It showed them using uh, words that we don't use for people of color and making disparaging remarks about them as well. Um, basically, without going into the offensive details of it, uh, they were pouring cups of water into a sink and the whether the cup was empty or full indicated whether a value written on a piece of paper was something that applied to those people. And so sometimes the cup was full and the word was a bad word, and sometimes the cup was empty and it was a, it was something good. And so it very much portrayed the the people that were being referred to as all of the stereotypes that you might expect. You'd have to go watch the video for yourself, and this is not going to be a situation where I take apart the video. Rather, I'm going to take apart the response, the legal response. The students were quickly identified by their classmates, and the principal had to respond. Tonight, it has been brought to my attention that the inappropriate video was created. Please know that this video has been addressed immediately, and any student involved in this production will face serious consequences. This type of behavior will not be tolerated. The district's response was shared 3,000 times, and then shortly after 3 p.m., district officials announced the students were no longer enrolled in the school system. The resulting social media outrage encourages me to be proud to be part of such a wonderful community that would be against this behavior. We will get through this together and will continue to uphold the values that make our community great. It is our priority to keep schools safe, and there is no doubt this incident has caused significant tension at Carrollton High School across the district, state, nation, and world. In-person classes are already suspended for the rest of the academic year. The school year is not officially over. The seniors in the video were set to graduate, but Julian Foster, or Julianne Foster, confirmed that they won't be receiving their diplomas or walking across the stage with their classmates. Our school year has not yet ended, so they will not be graduates of Carrollton High School. So that's an interesting story. Carrollton High School is a public school. Therefore, it is a governmental actor, also known as a state actor, or this invokes the state action doctrine. So being a state actor means the First Amendment and the Fifth Amendment, the Constitution, federal law, state law, privacy rights, students' rights, freedom of speech rights, all apply the same way that they would apply to the government. Now, it's a student situation, so it applies differently than it would apply to a non-student. So the government can't tell Leonard French what he can and can't say beyond a very, very specific point that we're going to go over in one of the cases here. And that's because Leonard French is not a student of a, pub, of, of a public school, of a high school. When Leonard French was in public high school, there were some more restrictions as to what one could say. And let's maybe take a look at two cases. And, and by the way, I am basing some of this off of this tweet by Pope Hat, who is awesome. And if you haven't uh, heard of Ken White, who was a Southern District of New York prosecutor, a U.S. attorney for the Southern District of New York, I believe it was. Uh, Ken White, also known as at Pope Hat on Twitter, has a great account, does great legal analyses. I think he's retired now. Uh, he, he does make a podcast called Make No Law. And I swear, I'm yes, I am definitely following him. I'm just not signed into my account. 
Um, and he does a whole quick analysis, which I'm mirroring a little bit here. We're going to talk about the Tinker case. We're going to talk about the Brandenburg case. And we're going to talk about why you can't expel a public school student for this kind of behavior. Or can you? And, and I'm not quite finished with the analysis, but we're going to go through it together and we'll see what we think. But this sounds like this school may have uh, issued the expulsion notice without properly going through a due process of law situation. Of course, I needed a YouTube notification right during that. So first, let's look at a precedential court case called Tinker v. Des Moines Independent Community School District. This is a 1969 Supreme Court case. It was a landmark decision which defined the First Amendment rights of students in U.S. public schools. The Tinker Test, also known as the Substantial Disruption Test, is still used by courts today to determine whether a school's interest to prevent disruption infringes upon students' First Amendment rights. Let's go over the background. In 1965, five students in Des Moines, Iowa, decided to wear black armbands to school in protest of the Vietnam War and supporting the Christmas truce called for by Senator Robert F. Kennedy. Among the students were John F. Tinker, 15 years old, his siblings Mary Beth and Hope, 13 and 11, and Paul, 8, along with a friend Christopher Eckhart, 16. The students wore the armbands to several schools in the Des Moines Independent Community School District, Roosevelt High School for Christopher, Warren Harding Jr. High School for Mary, and uh, an elementary school for Hope and Paul. The Tinker family had been involved in civil rights activism before the student protest. The children's mother, Lorena, was a leader of the peace organization in Des Moines. Christopher Eckhart and John Tinker attended a protest the previous month against the Vietnam War in Washington, D.C. The principals of the Des Moines schools learned of the plan and met before the incident occurred to create a policy that stated that school children wearing an armband would be asked to remove it immediately. Students violated violating the policy would be suspended and allowed to return to school after agreeing to comply with the policy. The participants decided to violate this policy. Hope and Paul were not in violation of the policy since the policy was not applicable to elementary schools and they were not punished. No violence or disruption was proven to have occurred due to the students wearing the armbands. Mary Beth Tinker and Christopher Eckhart were suspended from school for wearing the armbands on December 16th. John Tinker was suspended for doing the same the following day. A suit was filed after the Iowa Civil Liberties Union approached the family and the ACLU agreed to help with the lawsuit. Dan Johnston was the lead attorney on the case. The Des Moines Independent Community School District represented the school officials who suspended the students. The children's fathers filed suit in district court. The district court upheld the decision of the school board. A tie vote in the U.S. Court of Appeals meant that the district court's decision continued to stand and forced an appeal to the Supreme Court directly. The only students involved in the lawsuit were Mary Beth, John, and Christopher. During the time of the case, the Tinker family received hate mail and death threats, among other hateful messages. The case was argued before the Supreme Court November 12, 1968. The court decided in a 7-2 decision, they held that the First Amendment does apply to public schools and that administrators would have to demonstrate constitutionally valid reasons for any specific regulation of speech in the classroom. The court observed, it can hardly be argued that either students or teachers shed their constitutional rights to freedom of speech or expression at the schoolhouse gate. Judge Abe Fortas wrote the majority opinion holding that the speech regulation at issue in Tinker was based upon an urgent wish to avoid the controversy which might result from the expression, even by the silent symbol of armbands, of opposition to this nation's part in the conflagration in Vietnam. This decision made students and adults equal in terms of First Amendment rights while at school. The court held that for school officials to justify censoring speech, they must be able to show that their action was caused by something more than a mere desire to avoid the discomfort and unpleasantness that always accompanies an unpopular viewpoint, and that the conduct would materially 
and substantially interfere with the requirements of appropriate discipline in the operation of the school. The court found that the actions of the tinkers in wearing armbands did not cause disruption and held that their activity represented constitutionally protected symbolic speech. The court ruled that the First Amendment rights were not absolute and could be withheld if there was a carefully restricted circumference. Student speech that has the potential to cause disruption is not protected by Tinker. So then the question becomes, did these students video and their behavior outside of school in this, what I, I am not condoning this video at any, I am 100% with the school district on the student's behavior was reprehensible. What's what I'm questioning is whether this tinker standard, whether it has to materially and substantially interfere with the requirements of appropriate discipline in the operation of the school. So did it disrupt how, what did the district, what is the district going to say in probably the inevitable lawsuit? What is the district going to say was the basis for expelling the students? Was there a tremendous disruption of the operation of the school? Maybe, maybe they can say that a bunch of phone calls and, and outraged parents and everything was operation of this was was disruption of the operation of the school but school is is not not out right now i maybe, maybe they're not holding classes maybe they are uh, if they're holding classes they appear to be online classes how does that video disrupt the, this the, the operation of the school the video wasn't being shown by the school the, the video wasn't being shown by the students in the school the video is terribly offensive don't get me wrong but does my inability to control my reaction to the video mean that they are causing a disruption if i was representing them and i'm definitely not but you know for devil's advocacy just to for hypothetical uh i would argue that i would i would argue that my some, you know, the, the, the community's outrage is not a disruption that I have caused. Now, now, I'm not comparing their cause to any worthy cause or anything like that, but the Vietnam War black armbands were, uh, were speech that did not interrupt the classroom. How then does a video released on TikTok outside the classroom that just reflects poorly on those students' choices, how does that reach a level of materially and substantially interfering with appropriate discipline and operation of the school. Certainly I can see the counter argument. The community was outraged. The students wouldn't be able to, to stop talking about it. Uh, people would probably be uh, addressing the dispute directly between the students. So there might be you know verbal fighting or physical fighting. Um, there might there might be harassing or annoying or something. Um, it's hard for me not to think that that's the product of the people who are reacting to it. You can react appropriately or you can react inappropriately. The, the appropriate reaction to this is condemnation and outrage, sure, but not necessarily physical violence and not even verbal violence either. You want to rise above these kinds of these kinds of idiots, for lack of a better way to describe it. I mean, I feel kind of bad. They're kids. They've obviously been led astray to have those views, um, and and it's something that I think they can overcome and maybe someday be better than that. But is expelling them a constitutionally sound decision? And I, I'm not sure that it is. Let's see what else Pope Hat has to say. Pope Hat said that the students are jerks and he wouldn't want to know them and welcome their future of mediocrity. And he does then go into the speech rights. Apparently Mary B. Tinker is, is actually on Twitter. I will have to follow her. She kicked butt over black armbands and therefore rules remain and students do not surrender First Amendment rights as a consequence of being students. Schools can't punish students for speech that doesn't fall under an existing First Amendment exception. There are some explainers here from Pope Hat, uh, so you can visit this link that I'll put in the description below. Off-campus social media speech could be shown to be a substantial disruption on campus, particularly if aimed at particular students or teachers, but not sure how it disrupts the school if the school is not in session. So was that TikTok video aimed at a specific 
teacher pope hat has a few links here uh, one of which is a link to the bell versus itawamba explainer that he's done where he goes into how taylor bell at a school in mississippi had a disagreement with one of the coaches and felt that they were being inappropriate with his female classmates so he wrote lyrics to a rap song that specifically targeted those coaches better watch your back i must serve this person like i serve the junkies with some drugs i'm gonna hit you with my ruger uh you're messing with the wrong one going to pistol going to get a pistol down your mouth bow um the judges in the fifth circuit disagreed that that was that that that, that was uh, a tinker that that was a free speech issue and instead found that it was specific enough to cause an actual disruption at school and therefore not within the freedoms established by the tinker v des moines case so there is precedent for having a, a outside of school social media post target somebody in the school and it be considered enough of a disruption to limit the students free speech rights but this did not target any particular person in the school it was terribly inappropriate it targeted people by race but it made general stereotypes incorrect stereotypes and offensive stereotypes about people's race but it didn't target a specific individual so if school is not in session if it is off-campus speech via social media even students have rights so as much as we disagree with the content of those students speech and i don't think that there's any problem with their future admissions to college and scholarships for wrestling and all that being revoked i don't see how any of that is a either a government actor or isn't something that can be denied based on the judgment that they've shown someone who's already in high school which is something that's required in the u.s who you know they're not dropping out they, they, they were they were expelled they have the right to finish attending that high school and and be be graduated to the next level if they have met the requirements of the high school and the high school can't make rules against all free speech it, it can only make rules against free speech that causes a material and substantial disruption so we might see a lawsuit from the pair who got expelled and the school might be forced to issue their diplomas or compensate them financially or both could happen i bet you they're exploring their options with an attorney right now so what do you think of that i don't like it but it's it's how the law works and we have to conform ourselves if not conform our behavior to the law at least conform our understanding to the law and if we disagree with the law we need to be able to disagree with it knowing what it actually says and not just disagreeing with it emotionally we have to be able to understand where it's coming from what it's trying to accomplish and then we can adequately argue for it or against it or its application so let us know what you think in the comments below. That's a terribly controversial case. So that is our show. Thank you for joining me. I'm Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney. This is a community-supported legal education channel. Please consider supporting us by joining us on patreon.com slash ljfrench or sponsors.com slash law or floatplane or YouTube memberships. The $50 plus supporters for the month of April get their names read out loud at the end of the videos. Thank you very much to Wes Delge, Video Quarantine, John Steele, Gavin Barnard, Evie, Kyle Mudrox, Spirit Bear, Michael Pierce, Jan Gray, Daniel Perez, Aspernari, Joe Tyson, Benjamin Hightoff, Stephen Otta, Cute Grills in Your Area, Longreach Jones, Zachary Cheney, Nicely Done Defense, Mullen PC, Sean McNamara, Josh Baker, Ugly Grill, Gregory, Shiloh T, Michael Moore, and Beast Man. That's an awesome list. Thank you so much for your support. And thank you to the $5 plus supporters scrolling on the LED panel next to me and on the screen in front of me. Everyone goes in the description of the videos below. Always appreciate you. I'll see you in the videos that drop. Stay safe, stay healthy, wash your hands, social distance, and we'll get through this together. I'm Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney. I'll see you in the next one. Love you all. Bye.
we might see a lawsuit 